Welcome to DevNet Create and Secure Data Center at the push of a button. I am Jeff Comer, Data Center Technical Solutions Architect based out of Research Triangle Park, uh, U.S. Public Sector. And I'm Kelly Jones, a Systems Architect for the U.S. Public Sector, supporting the U.S. Navy team out of Herndon, Virginia. We're going to go ahead and get started here. What we're going to do today is talk to you a little bit about um, how Cisco can ap apply to your CICD pipeline. When people talk about a CI/CD pipeline, they typically think of tools like GitLab, Ansible, Jenkins, which we, we're going to show you today too, but we're going to show you how you can bring in different Cisco components to get a, a more solid and a more secure pipeline in place. So as part of that design, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can use a, a, an ACI simulator ahead of time to validate some of your code in your ACI environment to create your contracts and to make sure that, that they're operationally sound before they're deployed. From there, we're going to feed it into Network Assurance Engine, which will be rolled into ne Nexus Dashboard uh, Network Intersites in the future. And then we're going to, and that's going to give us validation of what we've done against our operational environment, which will make sure that the code is, is actually working in production the way that we intend it to. From there, we're just going to show you how we're using the code to deploy some applications, make sure they're secure, and then validating them and pulling them out of quarantine into an operational environment. So from there, let's actually get into the meat of it. So uh, the previous slide, you saw a number of different components. We're gonna walk through a lot of those, uh, at least relatively quickly, so you can get an idea of, of how this whole, the whole thing works. So the first thing we're looking at is Jenkins. This is uh, the main orchestration engine behind all of the automation that we're gonna do here. So, so ultimately we're looking for a validated results via a, a CI CD pipeline, for a zero trust architecture that is functional at completion that can be rolled out in production. One of the problems we're trying to solve is um, uh, our customers are often remote uh, and, and often don't have sufficient training to do these sorts of things. So we want to be able to validate infrastructure for let's say for instance, a new application deployment uh, prior to deploying it at the remote location so that we can minimize or completely eliminate any of the associated uh, oopses in the network that are often a problem. So looking here at Jenkins real quick, uh, you'll see a few pipelines over here. So this is going to be a set of stages and steps that are going to execute a, a series of code modules, if you will. While we are thinking about that very quickly, let's just look at probably another very important piece of this is the source code itself, right? So Jenkins is gonna reach out, the source code is gonna run a number of operations. We're gonna tell it the order of events and so forth. So let's just look at some of the source quickly. Um, it's gonna be a combination of Python. Uh, it's gonna be some Ansible scripts behind the scenes to do a lot of the, the heavy lifting we're gonna do in ACI. Uh, so um, let's just look at say for instance, uh, ACI ports. We're going to use Ansible to configure ACI ports in a physical fabric that are gonna connect ultimately to servers, there's ESX and so forth behind all of those in virtual machines. When you think of Ansible, uh, it's, it's a series of modules that are gonna execute, which is, which is great and easy when you think in terms of one port or two ports, but what if it's 500 ports? So that's the reason why we have things like Python in front of it is to basically just take a spreadsheet. We've got a CSV file over here, it describes our port definitions. Uh, there it is, here's a, a, a group of ports. And we're going to take that data uh, and we're going to convert it to a YAML file that Ansible is going to be able to understand and actually uh, put into the environment. So here is an example. Of, this is actually the one that we're going to be using, an Ansible playbook that is going to configure all of the ports inside of an ACI fabric. So it's really not... Uh, a whole lot of steps in this one. There are, there are several uh, other playbooks that are considerably uh, lengthier. Um, we won't go into those in, in great detail at this point. So, And I would just like to add, one of the reasons that we're doing this is we're pushing this through an ACI simulator. And what the ACI simulator does for us is it creates a digital twin environment. And that digital twin environment allows us to create a user environment on the fly. So we can have multiple files, we can have multiple pipelines with different customer bases and different configurations. And then this script runs out and it will configure all the ports and all the contracts and all the infrastructure that we need to simulate for that specific 
customer without having to have all the physical architectures. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. Yep, absolutely. So before we actually execute the code, I'm going to do a quick circle of uh, things in the environment, right? So here is vCenter. Uh, we have staged a couple of virtual machines. One is a web, uh, the other one is labeled app. Um, the app is ac actually happens to be a Postgres database. Uh, the web is just a web server, uh, as you would think. But the important thing to note is over here, they are currently sitting in quarantine. The reason for that is the EPGs that they need to be connected to don't exist yet. So a part of this pipeline will connect the VMs, spin them up, and then we will run some functional tests against Postgres. We'll also run some functional tests against those. Um, also, the Jenkins virtual machine itself uh, resides here. That one is out of band and something to note as a part of the test that really doesn't do us much good when we get inside the fabric for a new application such as a web server or Postgres database. So we have these other Jenkins agents that sit inside of the fabric. So that will give us a valid uh, check against the contract and filter modifications that we're gonna have to make. So um, another important piece over here, if it hasn't logged me out, this is Network Assurance Engine. We're going to be throwing a pre-change analysis against that. So. Let's go ahead and run this. Um, let's go ahead and do a build. You can see we've got some successful runs, so I'm expecting a you know perfectly a successful execution. But while this is going, you can see there's a number of stages. Stage the ACI simulator. This is really, as Kelly mentioned, a digital twin, and it's a functional test uh, against the the variables, if you will. Um, so if there's a bad subnet mask or something like that, this digital twin is going to catch it. Um, and, and it's going to, at any given point during the code execution, if it fails, um, the pipeline stops. So, so that's always a good thing. So what this looks like in code is defined in source in GitLab and the Jenkins file itself. So, so those stages you saw on the previous screen are here. Here's an Ansible playbook, uh, stage the ACI simulator. So we're creating that digital twin. Then we're going to change it. These are going to be the proposed changes for the production environment. So... I think maybe this is the APIC simulator. It may or may not actually uh, come up here, but let's give it a shot real quick. And one of the things that is very helpful about this in the Jenkins pipeline specifically is as you can see, the different fields are following along the drawing we showed initially, the different, uh, the different requirements you have to field an application in the network are self-documenting once you put them into this pipeline. And it's very easy for somebody to come along and see what needs to take place in order to get an application moved into production. Yeah. So we are in the process of making some changes. You can see there's a couple of tenants that are already built in ACI. Uh, let's go back and check our pipeline, see where we are. So now we're going to uh, validate the new modifications uh, in the simulator itself. So we should see, hey, here's a new tenant. Uh, and we're going to be building things here. So uh, as this progresses, we also want to go over here and see this. Um, we should be running a pre-change analysis against Network Assurance Engine. So Kelly, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So what a Network Assurance Engine, which is, um, for those of you who may not realize it, is going to do for us, is it's going to check our production environment. So it will actually, the Network Assurance Engine, which will be network it, tied into Network Insights in the future, it actually goes out and it looks at our existing ACI architecture and it has our existing policy, our existing infrastructure, and it can actually see what we're planning on doing and give alerts back to us if we're doing something that's going to break our policy or break the network. So that's why we do it in a two-phase process. The ACI simulator allows us to check, as Jeff was saying, it allows us to check whether the code is good, whether we've got that logic in place to actually create the contracts, create the EPGs and create those parameters. And that's done offline in a simulated environment. Then we take an extra step of caution and put it through the network assurance engine to make sure that it's not going to hurt our production environment. This two-stage process gives our customers a lot more assurance and comfort that what they're getting ready to deploy remotely or even in the field is, is not going to break the infrastructure or break the architecture. It's also giving us a chance because we can actually put policy into NAE, it's giving us a chance to ensure our security policy is intact before it's deployed. Um, for those of you guys who don't know it, ACI is a zero trust architecture and we wanna maintain that. And the combination of the, uh, the controlled environment with the, the, the code actually going in as we put it in and being validated helps us keep that zero trust secure environment. 
Yes. So um, real quick, what we're looking at, and I, I hope you caught it before in the uh, in the video that um, it wasn't actually able to uh, reach the other side. So this is one of the Jenkins agents. So it's inside of the fabric, and it is just executing a ping uh, against uh, one of the one of the two new application virtual machines that we have out there. So we go back here real quick. Those VMs that used to be in quarantine are now in specific endpoint groups where they should be. And one thing I want to point out about this pipeline, a ping is one thing, but what we actually did over here is execute some tests with some Python code right down here, way down here at the bottom. So those Jenkins agents uh, actually went out and did an HTTP GET, right? So it checks to make sure, is the web server reachable? I don't really care about a ping. I have a web server. So um, I was able to actually get a successful web connection and I was also uh, able to successfully log into a Postgres database. So um, this is a specific pipeline that's built on a trigger. So it's waiting for some data from uh, StealthWatch, actually, that's going to uh, identify some ports and protocols and so forth. And then we're going to execute code against that and modify filters. So um, if you want to go ahead. The second part of the demo, we're going to pick up where we left off on the last one. We have an example here of what you can do from a security perspective using StealthWatch or Secure Network Analytics. So what we're doing in this pipeline is we have a gold config. We have our applications deployed. We've baselined them with StealthWatch. We know what flows we expect. We know what ports we expect open. We know how we expect those applications to communicate. So what happens if somebody gets a little careless, they deploy something new, there's a new port seen on the network, and StealthWatch detects that? Well, certainly that's going to send something to your StealthWatch dashboard. You're going to be alerted that, that something's changed in your security flow, and you'll be given an, you'll have the chance to investigate it. But we're going to show you how here we can take that same information, compare this new flow that we received from StealthWatch against our original gold config StealthWatch flow map, and we'll get an alert, and we will send it through a validation pipeline that takes action on that alert. We're going to kind of show you what happens if we want that port to stay open and what happens if we don't want that port to stay open. So picking up where we left off, we deployed a new application. It consists of a web server and a Postgres database. And we are looking at a screen that is validating at the very least that we've got uh, a ping. We've got ICMP uh, connectivity between uh, the two uh, new applications and, and the Jenkins agent. So we were able to validate also as a part of the previous pipeline that Postgres works as well as the web server. So we're looking here in ACI. A number of things happened in that previous pipeline. So we deployed some bridge domains over here, uh, application EPGs, uh, those are ultimately associated with a contract. And if we look at the contract itself, it is wide open, right? So Which is probably not what we want. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Which is where StealthWatch is gonna help us out. It, exactly, I mean, I like things nice and easy, especially around testing, let's run these things wide open, but uh, that isn't actually uh, good in a production customer environment. So what we are going to look at is a pipeline that is looking specifically at source code. Uh, that source code is going to change and we are going to modify that filter. This pipeline is gonna execute. Let's just look at the actual source code itself here very quickly. So here it is, here's a specific Jenkins file. It is really looking for information in source code that says, hey, I've got a change. We need to go do something. It's gonna execute an Ansible playbook implement the changes and modify the filters. So in this scenario, just to give it a, a little bit of background, in this scenario, what we've done is we baselined our config. We're talking about the gold config earlier. We did basically just a, a mapping of our valid StealthWatch flows and it's going out and comparing. And when that flow changes, it triggers a change in the Jenkins pipeline and that's what's gonna trigger our, our next action. Exactly, so uh, as we look into uh, the filter pipeline here very quickly. If we look at configure, uh, while we wait for this to pick up change, we have a build trigger, um, all stars. It's like a cron type of uh, look and feel. So it's going to look for source code. It already is. So it's, uh, it's found a change in the source. Now it wants to go execute the pipeline. Should be building the filter as we speak. And there we go. So the filter is complete. It actually executed the Postgres and uh, web test that we did previously. And if we go back here, there's the modification within ACI that 
now allows 5432 and it allows port 80, but our ping should be completely gone. And just to make that abundantly clear, there we have it. Ping is now unsuccessful, but we still are able to get to our web server. There's a quick curl command that dumps the web page, and we can also still log into our Postgres database. So um, we picked up a change uh, from a pipeline, executed the pipeline, locked down the ports and ACI the way that they should uh, should be. And I think the important thing to note about this, if you've, if you've worked in an operational environment, that transaction that took us about, about a minute or less typically involves teams of people from the IA side, teams of people from the network side. The network side goes to the IA people and they, what ports you want us to lock, to open up, what do you want us to lock down? And then you have to go in, the IA people want these ports locked down and then they wanna know that it's still locked down. And this is actually a negotiation process that can take, take quite a while. So we were able to do that in seconds, what can take actually days or weeks to complete yes. from a manual perspective. Absolutely. And we have one other option for a pipeline uh, that we could execute. So if it's a completely and totally misbehaving set of virtual machines, um, we could just lock these out altogether. So, so let's go back to vCenter. We are over here. We are filtered. We are in the correct EPGs, but uh, we don't like the way things are going with these VMs. So we can just uh, lock them out altogether. So they should be over here in the process of changing to quarantine. And there we have it. They are completely off the network as we speak. And now our, our Postgres and our web test should fail again. Absolutely. They should fail. And the ping fails. Postgres is going to time out. And so is the web, web connection. So completely isolated uh, from the network. <laughs> So this is just a quick demo. We've given you three different examples of how you can build out your architecture, how you can secure your architecture, and how you can validate whether services are working. What we've tried to show you here is the potential of how Cisco technologies can play into your CI CD pipeline to make them more agile, more secure, and more efficient. And there's a lot more we can do with this. We can pull in NSO to give you the failback capability where, where configurations can be removed. And there's certainly much more that we'd like to talk about, but for now, I think this is enough to keep you in, to keep you challenged, and we'll end <laughs> it here. Thank you very much. Thank you.